everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Caregiver's Toolbox, Tools for Everyday Caregiving, where we give you information and education about senior care topics. My name is Ryan Mack, and if I'm the host, I'm also the owner of a private home care company located outside of Boston in historic Lexington, Massachusetts. Um, and today we have a great guest. We have Neil Tatinko. Um, he is the CEO, the founder of two companies, um, Evergreen Senior Living, as well as Connected Home Living. Neil, thank you so very much for being part of the podcast, coming on and taking some time to educate people and uh, let them know about you and your services. Well, thanks for having me, Ryan. I'm happy to be here. So I'm uh, happy to share more about who we are and what we do and how we're helping, helping see you stay at home longer. Absolutely. And and before this, we started pressing the record button. We were we we're kind of talking about the dichotomy that you and I have of, of of helping seniors in a traditional manner that's been around for a while and now working with technology not to replace, but to an enhance the ability to provide care to seniors. Um, getting into your background, you were talking about how you started Evergreen first. So how about we we go through that? Like, what what was Evergreen? What was the catalyst for that? And then kind of that evolution into getting into the technology side of senior care. Well, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the way it all started, I uh, by hanging up my high tech hat. So I live here in Silicon Valley in California, and uh, I used to work for companies like Netscape and Yahoo. And it was just just like many people who are working in the elderly industry. It wasn't their calling, you know, when they first started their professional life. So uh, in 2000, uh, my wife and I decided to cash out our high tech stocks and just go deep into assisted living care. So we acquired an assisted living building in Central California. And to this very day, we still own it. It's a small 50 bed community. It's a modest size, not small, not large, but uh, but quite, you know, quite a bit of folks who um, uh, who we care for. But uh, but about two to three years into the company, um, we learned that the uh, the regulations to run an assisted living be is becoming more and more stringent. But also, we want to drive more patient uh, and patient care efficiency. So uh, uh, so we started inserting technology as part of our care. Right? I started capturing vitals. This the the application that we started utilizing in my assisted living allowed us to ask specific questions related to our residents. Uh, chronic ailments, right? Because when they come in, they typically have two or three chronic conditions, but I have a whole staff of non-clinical folks. So I relied on technology, right? So we captured, um, you know, weight information, blood information, but also this application that we utilize would ask us specific questions about, let's say their COPD or CHF and diabetes and so forth. But, but more importantly, as, as we started accumulating the data, we started looking at the data. Well, this data doesn't do us any good because we're non-clinical. So I started sharing it with the home health agency who would come into our building, the physicians who we would see on a regular basis, even just sharing the data with the adult children, letting them know, hey, your your mom is not going down the right path. You may want to share this with the, uh, the appropriate contacts. But so this data allowed us to collaborate together. Say, in fact, the feedback was fantastic. The doctor would see the data as like, holy smokes, you know, I, I don't see this patient very often, but with this daily data that you capture, it allows them to rely on empirical data to make more intelligent recommendations and assessments. And that's what happened. So they would tell us, oh, thank you for letting me know that the leg is swollen. So you folks there at Evergreen, could you make sure to elevate their legs? Could you make sure that they exercise more to make sure that they eat more appropriate food? And sure enough, that collaboration allowed us to prevent unnecessary trips to the hospital. And we started seeing more and more of our residents stay in my community longer, right? And so what happened next is that we developed a waiting list of people wanting to move in because we were full. And so I started a private duty agency. And so just primarily to service the people in our waiting list. And, but however, what I learned working for private duty or home care, um, many of these clients cannot afford 24 hour care. Uh, in Central California, if you want 24-hour physical care, it would cost you anywhere from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month. But who has that kind of money? Ninety-nine percent of the people cannot afford that budget, and so they can only afford, let's say, twenty-five hundred bucks a month or three thousand dollars a month. So at that cost level, obviously, we're going to have a more finite number of physical visits, and those physical visits are fantastic because the client 
is compliant while our caregivers are there because we're helping them bathe, eat the right food, administer the appropriate medication, do exercises, right? Which is fantastic doing that physical visit. But once you leave the premises, now the wheel starts coming off, right? You leave them on Friday, then you knock at the door on Monday. Why is it that they're at the hospital? They look fantastic when I left them. So something must have happened, right? And so, so that's why we develop Connected Home Living to bridge that gap of care because not everyone can afford 24-hour physical care. So we, we're offering this, this hybrid solution where we blend both technology and a re remote care coordination. So this way, even though there's no physical caregiver at the premises or a, an adult children or somebody who they've hired, at least this way we have these remote caregivers in various forms of technology to ensure that somebody's keeping an eye on the uh, on the client without the use of a camera or a listening device or a buttons to push or a wearable because we know those type of technologies are not so effective. Right? And and one of the things that um, I'm I'm so excited about with the amount of data and it's great that your background is in Silicon Valley where you're you're dealing with that tech side of things is that's what got me concerned because in Boston we are getting very close to pushing forty dollars an hour for private home care you know we both do private home care um, and and the the other the other thing that's always been the Achilles heel with private home care as I'm sure you know is that it's very difficult to staff short hour cases so now you're saying to to families, not only do you have to pay me the most that I've ever asked you to pay me, but you also have to give me a minimum of hours of five, six, seven hours when you really are only looking for one or two. Um, yeah. It is difficult for families in any scenario, assisted living, home care, or just starting this process to make these invasive changes to their parents' life without having data to back up those decisions. They're going out on a wing. They're 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 doing the best that they can with a physician that sees mom or dad if they're lucky four or five times a year. You know, like if they're really lucky, and yeah. assisted living staff can can help. But there's still that big struggle of getting them into home care or getting them into an assisted living and knowing what's going on. And even in an assisted living, um, uh, at least I'll speak in Boston, but at least in mean, most assisted livings, they're assisted livings. They're not 24 hours. Somebody's holding your mom or dad's hand all the time. So there's still uh, there's still blind spots on what's going on with mom and dad, even though it's better than being living al alone. And I guess my diatribe here is like, I'm so excited about this data and being able to present this to families and say, hey, listen, this is what's going on. Now you can make a really informed decision without feeling as much guilt without being concerned you're doing the right or the wrong thing. And it can be a collaborative effort between CHL, your PCPs, your other trusted advisors, family members. And then now Neil wants to hire me on as his marketing guy because I basically, he seems to be agreeing. Like that's what has gotten me so excited about this because it's so difficult talking to families and they don't, they're, they're, they're paralyzed by the fear of what how their parents are going to be angry with them or are they doing the right thing? And that's a, really tough position to be in when you're talking about just the invasiveness of private home care or changing somebody's uh, living location, but also then the tons of money that comes with that as well, right? That's yeah. that's not cheap either way. So, I mean, you must be seeing excited families that, that are just thrilled to be able to see that kind of data. No, I, absolutely. Uh, it, the, the data is fantastic, right? Because it, it gives you proof wh whether... Uh, you know, things are are turning the wrong way. And, but also, again, use that data to be more proactive about their care because a lot of folks tend to take action when it's too late, right? When they've already exacerbated their chronic condition. Now they're a point of no return where they're in and out of the hospital. And, and usually in that, in that situation, it, it's, it's hard to reverse things, right? But if we can be more proactive about their care, it's much more, uh, that, that's how, that's, I think that's going to be the secret to prolonging their tenure and what everybody wants is to stay at home longer. Right? So you introduced this, people started staying in their assisted living, in your assisted living longer, word was getting out, people wanted to come to your assisted living specifically because of the proof of concept of, hey, if we show this information, we can extend somebody's stay with us rather than the backdoor exit into a nursing home. 
what other what what happened next with that? Uh, that obviously seems to snowball into really developing CHL. Yeah, so I think to better understand what we do is to kind of l- let me kind of walk you through a, a little bit of day in life, right? So let's let's just say that you have a uh, a client or you have a loved one who uh, who lives at home, lives alone at home, and uh, and they have multiple chronic conditions, and you know that maybe perhaps. Uh, with this particular uh, client of yours, they're starting to, their memory's starting to fade a little bit more, and and also that uh, they've been uh, maybe uh, starting to show signs that they they're falling more, and also signs that they are not taking care of their chronic condition um, uh, as the way they should be. Right, so you can probably qualify, you know, a good chunk of the the senior elderly population who could use that that type of uh, that in that scenario. So, so what happened next? Let's say you you've said, okay, great, I. Um, I, I want to provide private duty care, uh, or I have somebody coming in, taking care of my mom, but she can only afford four hours of care because that's the minimum that's required by this agency. But uh, me as a concerned family member, I'm, I'm, I'm worried because once that caregiver leaves, now there's no, you know, my, my hope is, is this, right? It's uh, 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 or, uh, or constantly calling my, you know, my mom, but you, but you can only call your mom so often. So that's where our solution is a perfect blend with uh, a, a caregiver, uh, a, you know, caregiving help. So let's just say uh, the caregiver is there between eight to twelve, and then now the the caregiver has left the premises, and now the clients by themselves, right? So, so but before that client leaves, you know, we're gonna add connected home living to fill that gap of care. And so if this patient has multiple chronic conditions, we're going to recommend, number one, uh, assign them to a live 24-7 remote care coordinating team. These are live people who are, their main mission is to keep them away from the hospital, right? And they're going to be their friend, but they're also going to be the ones who are going to be taking that information, right? Because they'll receive that information, whether things are going good or bad. Right. So that's number one. They're going to get a live, very friendly person uh, that's going to work in a team 24 seven. But the next step would be to uh, uh, administer their right type of technology platform. And we retrofit them based on the client's willingness and ability to use the technology, because not all seniors are going to do back, you know, backflips with technology. Some are non-technical and some are open to technology, right? So if they're open to technology, uh, if they're, let's say, they're comfortable using their smartphone because they're often texting their grandkids or they're updating their their their, uh, their social media, we recommend the app to be installed on their phone, whether they're using iPhone or, or a Android device. Or if they prefer a tablet, we can install it in there as well. Uh, but once it's the application is installed, we're gonna customize that care plan based on their chronic condition. So we're gonna prompt them for their vitals and we're gonna measure exactly what, what those thresholds are. So let's say if they have a seven pound weight gain in three days, our system will alert, right? And it'll let us know, ooh, that's not good, especially if you have congestive heart failure. But also the system's gonna ask them uh, a series of questions very specific to their chronic condition. So if they have congestive heart failure, it's gonna ask about their swollen legs. It's gonna ask about their breathing. Their, their their dizziness and so forth. You know, th- those are kind of hard to remember all the time, but our system will prompt that. But anyway, once that information is inputted in there, all that data is sent to that assigned remote care coordinating team. And then on their screen, they'll see, oh, everything's good. Or if things are bad, they're going to call the patient live on video, just like what we're doing right now. We're going to talk to them on video. We're going to converse with them. They go, hey, Mrs. Smith, I noticed that you have, uh, you said that your leg is more swollen today than yesterday. Can you point your phone towards your leg so I can take a picture of it? And then while I'm taking a picture of it, I'm going to share it with your daughter and your doctor. This way they can, you know, provide that intelligent uh, recommendation if things are bad. And if things are bad, we can actually video conference in the clinician. So without having that client move out of the comfort of the recliner, we can bring the care to the home 24-7, right? Because most of the time, some of these seniors, if they're concerned about issues, guess what they're going to do? They're going to they're gonna press 911. <laughs> and so, and we don't want that. We want them to stay in the home. And that's what we do, 
right? But the other cool thing too is that we are um, we are uh, the these remote care coordinators. We're not going to wait for the alerts to pop into the screen. We're actually going to proactively reach out to them, right? So uh, we're gonna we're gonna call them. Let's say at seven o'clock at night. Maybe that's the uh, the care plan that we designed with a home care company. So they, the, the the remote care coordinator will call at night at seven and they'll say, okay, Mrs. Smith, how was your day today? Oh, fantastic. Well, let's before we go to bed, let's go through our mini checklist. Did you turn off the stove? Oh, fantastic, because you left it on three times already this month, all right? Did you, uh, how's the dog? Is, is the dog inside the house? Let's make sure it's inside, because I don't want you getting up in the middle of the night, straight you know, and walking and tripping in the living room. So let's make sure the dog's inside and lock the doors. Okay, fantastic. Now, according to uh, your 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 daughter, you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow at, at nine o'clock for blood work. And let's not let's make sure you don't eat past nine p.m. because if you do, it's going to screw up your results, right? But also, do you have a right to get to the appointment? Oh, you don't have a right. Well, we can't have you miss that right. So let me call your private duty agency to make sure that they show up a little bit early to so be sure that you are making it to your appointment. So it's, it's again, it's, it's there, the, our, our services is there to bridge that gap. Cause you know, without our care, we're going to have to rely on the senior themselves to ensure things are exactly the way they are. So, but we don't just stop there, right? Um, uh, the uh, as I mentioned, the, you know, if they use a smartphone, we can do that. But if they don't have a smartphone, we can provide them a, a, um, a what we call a telehealth kit, which will have its own tablet, but it's with all which will have its own internet built in. But all it does is telehealth, so they can't play Angry Birds or or Scrabble or play YouTube videos. It does nothing but but telehealth. But if they still don't want to use any kind of technology, that assigned remote care coordinator will just call them over the phone and just prompt them for all those vitals and also all those health survey questions. All right. So, so it's, again, it's designed for any type of client, whether they're technical and non-technical. And so, but the last piece though, is that we don't just stop there, right? We don't just manage their chronic conditions. We don't just keep them company. Um, but we're also there, we add another layer of technology to help identify potential faults or other wellness behavior that could be disconcerting, right? So that's one of the big reasons why we partner with WellAware Care, because um, in between that physical and virtual visits, we have these, these uh, very smart 4D radar technology that help identify whether the, the client has fallen uh, or, or maybe perhaps they're taking actions that could be disconcerting. Because this 4D technology is really cool. It's non-intrusive because it doesn't use a camera, doesn't use a listening device. There's no wearable. There's no buttons to push or pull cords to pull. It just constantly, the, the patient or client just does their normal day-to-day -day work. But with well aware care, we'll know when that, that client of yours is laying on the ground. And if it does, our remote care coordinator team will respond immediately, right, 24-7. And I think that's why many uh, 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 clients utilize us because normally without us, the alerts will go to the family members or somebody who they've elected, but many times they're asleep or maybe they ignore the alerts because sometimes there's too many alerts. But with our team, we respond immediately. And uh, but so we, we use uh, real time for fall detection, but we also use another layer of technology where it actually tracks their patterns and behaviors. So, uh, so, so it actually records their routine. And if they break that routine, our AI and machine learning technology identifies those anomalies. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say Mrs. Smith, her normal routine is cooking breakfast at 7 a.m. and making coffee every day. That's her routine. But however, if today we notice there's no motion in the kitchen, but she's still in bed, but it's already past 11 a.m., we're going to get an alert, right? Because she just broke that routine. Granted, there's no falls, right? But, but, but in this situation, since she broke that day-to-day that, that -day activity, we're going to get an alert. We'll call the patient. And actually, this happened in real life. We call the patient. We ask her, hey, Mrs. Smith, you're normally up in the kitchen at this time, but we noticed that you're still in bed. What's, what's going on? Oh, I, I took a new medication and I'm now having bouts of diarrhea and vomiting. So I, I'm, I'm having a little bit of dizzy spell. So we told the patient not to get up. Let me call your private duty agency. See if the caregiver can show up a little bit early. 
All right. And make sure not to feed them, you know, steak, you know, feed them crackers and, you know, seven up or whatever until we stabilize that stomach. But also we took that data and we shared it. Guess what? With the family members and the physician. Physician said, I apologize. <laughs> okay, let me rewrite this new medication and go pick up the new meds at this pharmacy by three o'clock. All right. So, uh, so in this situation, we got the alert at 11 o'clock. We notified the right contacts based on our escalation protocol. And we even went as far as contacting the doctor to ensure that we, you know, that patient stops taking that, that med and have that medication sitting in the pharmacy, all without having to move that patient out of the comfort of their, in this situation, their bed, right? So that's the care that we provide. Again, we, we, we fill that gap. And that's why our results are astronomically um, uh, uh, are, 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 are impressive. I'll give you an example. Um, we're, we're helping a hospital here in Silicon Valley. And before we got involved, their readmission rates for these chronic conditions were hovering between 17 to 25 percent rehospitalization. That means one out of four patients who leave the hospital come back to the hospital within 30 days. All right. And the hospitals don't like that because they get penalized. But under our care, when they use our services to when patients go home uh, after discharge, right now for this particular hospital, our readmission rate is less than 1%. It's actually 0.9%. All right. Versus without us, it's 25%. All right. So that's the type of results that we deliver. And, uh, and this is something we also replicate in other other um, other surroundings. And that's probably the reason why we have uh, signed the, 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 the third, I think maybe even fourth largest private duty agency in the country who will be now including our services as part of the care. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but I mean, it, it is allowing families and certainly COVID-19 has has helped in the sense of forcing seniors to adopt technology they otherwise were maybe not willing to or or chose not to or whatever reason but also the 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 the, the common um common thing you see or situation you see is that you know adult children are living further and further away from where their their parents live um people are moving to california or they move somewhere else the grass is always green in another state um so when somebody gets older like i talk to my dad three four times a day he's 72 years old spinal stenosis so he doesn't walk as well as he once did is he going to tell me about the bouts of diarrhea that he has is he going to tell me about these these intimate things that aren't exactly like you know dinner conversation for lack of a better term of course not he's just gonna yeah. sit there and granted maybe he's not the perfect example but as you get older and older those things matter. And you, you know, somebody having an upset stomach when they're 30, 40s, and 50s is a lot different than when you're in your 70s, 80s, and 90s. And, um, you know, and also seniors are going to be far more um, honest, and we see this all the time with third parties than they are with their own family members. I have family members like, I have begged my mom to do that 900 times, and your caregiver comes in, and it's done within an hour. And it's like, it's, it's the messenger. It's not because like you're bad and the caregiver's good. It's just that it's human beings. You know, when it's your daughter telling you that, go buzz off. But when it's your caregiver who's a guest, then and and I would imagine that would be the same with your team that they are trained professionals that are there for uh, a reason, and somebody's going to be much more open and honest about what they're going through. And you know, at the end of the day, it gets back to the the adult children, anyways, so that they can help make those decisions. So, I mean, it it seems like a solution to a major problem that maybe not everybody realizes they're going to have right now. But like in the next five to fifteen years, there's going to be a lot of people realizing that their parents are part of that silver wave that now live a thousand miles away and you can't just up and move with your wife and two kids and your job to be there with your parents. So what is that uh, solution going to look like? So, I mean, um, have you found that COVID-19 for all the horribleness that was part of that has allowed and, and forced people to look at solutions like CHL that are very technology driven to say, Hey, listen, we, we've got to figure this out because we may not be able to see each other all the time. Has that has that happened? And have you seen that? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Pre-COVID, I, I, I had to spell the word telehealth or remote care. Uh, but during COVID, people, uh, and a lot of the, 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 the general U.S. population became accustomed to seeing their their physicians and clinicians remotely through technology. And so uh, after COVID, yeah, the, we saw the adoption rate spike up because people now are accepting this mode of care. And, and also going back to your example, uh, your, your point there, Ryan, uh, my mother is actually on the telehealth system and I would talk to her quite often as well. And uh, the one day, uh, uh, one of the remote care coordinator calls me up, it's like, hey, uh, Neil, um, your mom, by the way, has a, a, a bruise on her left shoulder. And it's like, wait, wait a second. I, I just talked to her 30 minutes ago. Why didn't she share this with me? It's like, oh, because she doesn't want to burden you. Uh, she knows you're super busy. And, you know, she thought she can just sleep on and it'll go away, right? But but you're right. In the in her couch, casual conversation with her remote care coordinator, she was more than happy to divulge every gross detail that's going on in her life because, uh, you know, because she's been bobbling up inside and now she gets to, uh, you know, share with somebody, right? So And, and uh, congratulations on the home care side of things. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, we're 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 just an echo chamber and and not convincing anybody because I think that this will this you know being on the side of well aware care, but at the end of the day, well aware care is one of the tools with CHL that, that utilizes is that you know home care companies, as I'm sure you experience, our our lead times are very short, meaning we get a the pipeline is short. I guess I mean we get a call on a Thursday, somebody needs services on a Friday. It's not like a three months sell sales prod, uh, prospects. So you're, you don't necessarily know when your peaks and valleys are going to be coming. And on a, on a sales side and a business side, you're able to, to be able to monitor people far earlier in that aging process to be able to say to somebody, Hey, listen, you might need, it might be as simple as, Hey, there was a fall. You just need to get rid of the throw rugs or get rid of the, the stupid cat that everybody has. <laughs> That you that is the tripping hazard to the bane of our existence, or it's something more more serious that you need home care or somewhere in between. Um, right. You know, I think these home care companies are going to see a, a lot of value of being able to um, to get a real glimpse on what's going on in in their client's home and providing that information to uh, to their clients. So, I mean, that, I, I think they're going to be ecstatic about that. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right because. Uh... Yeah, you're right. In terms of uh, uh, time to, uh, in terms of the immediate care, I mean, we can the, obviously reaching out to the patient through uh, through phone calls and video that takes seconds to uh, to get up and running. Uh, in, in fact, the um, uh, what do you call this? The uh, the the other piece too is the is the cost, right? People are going to ask, us, "Oh my gosh, you know, uh, I, I'm paying twenty five to forty dollars an hour for somebody to show up at my." you know, up my mom's house and I'm only going to afford four hours of care. Right. So let's say it's, uh, let's say it's the low end at 25 times four, you know, that's a, uh, that's a hundred bucks a day multiply that by 30 days. That's three grand a month, but that's only for four hours of care. And that's why adding in uh, CHL, which is $8 and 33 cents, everything that I just talked to you about, it's $8 and 33 cents at the average cost to the client. 833, right? And so you can't even hire somebody for half an hour for 833, let alone 833 for 24 seven, right? So that's why um, the the adoption for this, or that's why, you know, when you, when you, when you have this hybrid approach of physical and virtual, you know, uh, uh, the, the, you know, this model makes, makes a lot of sense uh, all the way around. So. Oh, you're on mute. There you go, I know. Right? I was trying to give you the microphone. And the way that I describe it to folks is that it is not necessarily about like getting more of your money. I mean, there's always a business side of 24 hour home care without a doubt. But the point of this is, is that when somebody comes to me or you with a 24 hour need, it's because they're being reactive in the sense that something major, an event occurred that's caused somebody usually to go to a hospital that said, hey, listen, we can no longer ignore the elephant in the room. This is a major problem. While if using this technology, using CHL um, with well aware care, you are able to uh, really be much more re uh, proactive about this. And you can start, the, the major fall doesn't just happen accidentally one day. 
there are a lot of falls that lead up to that. There are a lot of medication errors that or issues that lead up to that. There are a lot of conversations that should be happening with a telehealth specialist that can lead up to that. That and and one of the issues with our business is you can't quantify how many hospitalizations you prevented. You can't quantify how many falls you prevented unless you have a lot of falls beforehand. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, we are going to be able to help families be proactive in nipping this in the bud before it becomes a major issue that could end up making mom or dad's baseline change for the worse. And now instead of being able to be active and involved in the community, they have uh, mobility issues that really severely limit them or whatever issue might come and that quality of life um, goes down. And I think for a lot of people, um, I know myself, but I won't speak for everybody, but I think a lot of people, quality of life is as important, if not more important than quantity of life. A lot of people don't want to be around if they're stuck in a chair all the time, just wasting away. They want to be able to enjoy themselves, see friends, see family and do these things. And and by working together for a relatively low amount of money, comparatively to assisted living and, and private home care, you're able to really have a very good 360 view of what's going on in some inside somebody's home and be proactive before these major events occur. It's not guaranteed. There's no magical wand that prevents everything, but you can, you know, 80, 20 rule, I guess is my point here. You can do quite a bit with these types of services. Yeah, you hit it right in the head. You hit it right in the head. And, and in fact, well, what happens sometimes when, um, so some folks are not, uh, sometimes they're not even ready for any physical care, right? And so sure. uh, due to privacy, due to cost, maybe I, I need you know several other people involved to make the decision, or I still or I need to ease it, this in into my uh, my uh, to my conversation with my my loved one, and so uh, so oftentimes we see clients starting off with just CHL, but it's amazing you know once we build the rapport with the client, uh, they are open. They become open to bring in more care, right? And so, sure. uh, like I'll give you an example. Every Thursdays at nine a.m. for all of our clients across uh, across the country, we ask four questions, uh, additional questions. We ask if they have enough meds to last them to the weekend, enough food, how are they feeling, uh, pain wise, and also the number of four question is if they have any upcoming doctor's appointments. If they say yes to any of those, believe it or not, that actually leads to you know, more home care services because they say, yeah, I do. Uh, I am running out of uh, insulin, but I don't, I don't have means to get there. Or I have people coming in over the weekend, but my whole house is a mess because I still have stacks of, uh, of plates that are in the sink. I've got the laundry that's not been done. Uh, I need some help. I need some somebody to come in and, and normalize my place. And while they're at it, can somebody take me to the beauty shop? Because I got to look good to my grandkids, right? And so, uh, so you know, starting off with virtual care um, is is a, a good way to establish that beachhead, if you will. But it's amazing how we draw additional private duty care services shortly after, because you know we 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 coach the the the, the client, letting them know, hey, you're going to need more care. And you're not able to do it now, but if we bring in uh, these folks, uh, they can tell you how they can help out. And and and, and yeah. I think that's why yeah. a lot of private duties are are signing up with us too. And and the other thing that that I, I'm pretty self critical of of our industry. And one of the things that um, I, I feel is we we are on the bottom of the referral source list for uh, the waterfall. Right by the time that people get to us, they. They have tried everything they possibly can and 24 hour home care or whatever it is, is kind of the final bandaid to rip off before maybe the final bandaids a nursing home or whatever, but one of them. And so it can be difficult to pass out referrals back to people because they've tried so many things beforehand. And from, again, a business sense, being able to have customers that are much earlier in that that declining process allows the private home care company to do what you just said. Call up the, the, the VNA, we have it out here, but certified home care and say, hey, listen, there's a problem. You need to get in here to call up a, uh, a remodeling company or a, a home modification company that can come in and help out with things because you're seeing these different tripping hazards or they can't get up the stairs anymore. And so for, for private home care companies, that may be um, not be able to see the forest through the trees and they say, well, this is kind of this is so expensive or this costs money and I don't want to have to spend that kind of money. Well, 
imagine the, how many more people would be considering re referring to you because you're getting better outcomes of care. You have a long, longer aging in place than other agencies are able to do. And then on top of that, you're able to make referrals out to the very people that can refer you business because you're involved with these seniors much earlier in the aging process than you are traditionally, which is generally near the end of that aging process, probably in the last year of somebody's life. And so, so that that is another business reason why I was excited about Well Aware Care and CHL because it allows you to get more involved with a family and to be able to provide better services and go above and beyond than you normally can. And I think some agencies, and obviously not all, because you've had some success with um, home care companies, you know, it takes them a while to understand that and see that, hey, listen, you can really provide some great value here that's going to be a win-win. And yeah, it might be an upfront cost for a little bit of time, but you know, again, you have to invest in yourself to be able to keep growing and, and to, to be able to help other people. So I think that's going to be a real value add for a lot of these agencies as well. If I can just uh, ride on that coattail a little bit more. In fact, I uh, we, we talked to Converse with Hospitals. Uh, in fact, I did one today. And so they are telling us normally they don't invite private duty care into these discussions about re you know preventing rehospitalizations because they're typically non-clinical and they but uh but this particular hospital is now forming a preferred network of private duty agencies because uh they're seeing a lot of patients who do get discharged don't require home health or rehabs uh to recover after after being uh sent away from the hospital and so, uh, so they, you know, but at the same time, this hospital say, well, I want to make sure this client, although they don't, they don't, they're not going home with a nurse. I still want to make sure that they don't go back to my, to my hospital because I don't want to get penalized. So I better start recruiting private duty care agencies who have something beyond your typical, oh, I have fantastic caregivers. Oh, I have, they'll show up on time and, you know, they, uh, they're, they're very friendly, you know, now, well, that's. You, you better have those type of service, but what, what are you going to do to help guarantee that that patient of mine I'm, I'm about to refer to you doesn't go back to the hospital? So you have to offer something compelling and uh, uh, by, by bolting in CHL as part of your care and articulate that, hey, hospital, when you bring your patients to my care, we're going to make sure that they are going to use the telehealth services because it's, it's designed to identify red flags about the chronic ailments. We're going to see them every day. We're going to capture all this cool data. And oh, by the way, look at this, this readmission rate uh, uh, if, uh, if they are under CHL. And so, uh, so that's going to help guarantee uh, uh, or ensure that the, that the, uh, that the hospital are forming these preferred, net preferred networks of, uh, of private duty are, um, are, uh, are nailed down pretty good. So anyway, not sure that makes great. any sense or not, but uh, it totally but that's does. another it, great source. It, it does because, you know, it, you know, uh, uh, the joke I make, again, I'm self-critical of our own industry. No, no private agency has ever gone into a meeting and said, I'm mediocre. Everybody's the greatest of all time, right? They're the best home care you can use. Well, yeah, you and everybody else, what makes you different? Um, and that's certainly a differentiator without a doubt. One one thing I'd like to, as we're, we're wrapping up, we talked a lot about CHL, but if we could talk about a little bit about Well Aware Care and and how they've kind of helped you out and you you seem to have um, have a good relationship. I wasn't involved with that relationship. That was more with you and George and Bob. But can you speak a little bit more about kind of what you see the value with, with Well Aware Care and how that's helped with CHL and some of your customers you might have, whether it's at Evergreen or, or somewhere else? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, I, before I settled on well of our care, I looked at 13 other uh, false sensors and I tested them in my community and also tested it with my, with the folks who are, are, uh, who are servicing at home. And uh, I, I went with them because uh, again, I, I, I tried the cameras, but nobody wants cameras. Uh, it's, it's almost 99% no. I, you know, I don't want somebody gawking over my, uh, or want to be gawked at by camera or even a listening device. They, they find it really creepy. Uh, but also they, they don't like the pendants. They don't like the pull cords because if they fall and uh, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, pretty surprising that many who fall forget that they have a pendant around their necks or people who fall, 
these, these little fall devices only identify fall when you fall like a tree. But unfortunately, most seniors fall when they slide off a bed or a wheelchair, right? And so, uh, so that's why the the life alert buttons we, we find very ineffective. So we scoured the uh, the uh, the uh, the internet and invited multiple vendors, and we came across Well Aware Care because uh, they do have this 4D real time fall detection. It sees the patient live twenty four seven. Uh, but it doesn't actually see their facial, you know, the definition of their facial features or their private parts. So it's very, 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 uh, very, very private uh, solution. Um, and uh, what's also impressive about them is what we call the back end. And so they have a, 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 a portal that doesn't just allow us to receive alerts, but us to trend information, uh, because that's one of the things that we we pride ourselves here at CHL is we're, we're very proactive. So we, we can take some of this data and start training them. So let, I'll give an example. Let's just say uh, three weeks ago, you know, Mrs. Smith started falling uh, maybe twice, three weeks ago, but was, she was able to get up on time before it was triggered uh, an alert. Then the following week, we noticed that she she has continued to fall and now it, it's, it's, it's doubled. And then this week it doubled again. So based on this trend, it's going down the wrong way, even though alerts aren't being triggered uh, to my company, but we're seeing the falls happen more and more often. So that would then uh, that would then empower us to reach out to, let's say, the family members and let them know, based on this trend, you know, there may be something going on with your mom. Maybe it's her medication. Maybe she's getting weak, or maybe perhaps you know there's other tripping hazards that's causing this issues. But anyway, the the information at Well Aware Care uh, has has uh, developed for us, allows us to be more proactive about their their care, and our family members love it. Right? Oh, that's so. that's that's great. I mean, certainly, I mean, you you guys are are CHL is taking that data and and really interpreting it and helping families interpret it, and then obviously taking the step forward of of being proactive based off that data and and engaging with the senior and their family members about what you're seeing. So it's certainly one tool in the, the toolbox that um, you're using to provide a complete amount of, of care for your, uh, your customers. But um, I did, I honestly didn't know that you had looked at there. I didn't know there were 13 out there. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Oh no, me. there's I mean, more. There's I'm more. Sure, I'm sure. There's far greater. But, yeah. I, I still have my, uh, my matrix of spreadsheet where I've broken down every feature uh, and I've created a little grade based on each of those features and also associated the cost in there because uh, there, there's some really cool technologies out there. But if, if it's cost prohibitive and it takes hours to deploy, uh, that factors in as, as part of our decision. You know, that, and that, that's one of the cool things about well aware care uh, for many of our clients. If you have it configured properly, literally the second you plug it into the wall and have it configured uh, installed onto uh, onto the right part of the of the room. We can be up and running in 30 seconds. And as opposed to this one technology, it looked took literally two and a half hours per device, which wasn't uh, obviously conducive, uh, you know, uh, in real life. Yeah, I mean, it's it, you know, and and of course, like you said, once once somebody hears it's got a camera or a listening device or or anything in that realm, the the the, the conversation is usually over pretty quickly. Um, it's just, and you don't. Yeah, I wouldn't want a camera in my bedroom either, right? So, like, I can't blame blame somebody. And where where are people falling off in the bathroom, the ba- yep. bedroom, like where you're naked and you're changing, and yeah. you know? So, of course, nobody's going to want that. But um, have you has have you, you have deployed this in an evergreen, correct? Like, have yeah. you had have you so you have you had people yeah. that have used the well aware care and it's worked out well? Yeah, yeah. So I have it uh, in my assisted living community. Both I have two sections in my building. We have the assisted care, and we have the memory impaired section. And so we have it deployed on both solution. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I love it. Uh, for, if I were to put on my evergreen hat, uh, one of the greatest value for me is uh, uh, many of our clients right now they like their doors locked, right? They have they have private. They have uh, re- what we call residence rights that allows them to lock their doors, which, which is great for the resident, but it's horrible for the the owner of the building because, you know, we, we, every time we try to jostle that doorknob, boy, they get really mad. But we have to do it because we want to hear if they're, if somebody has fallen. But now with this, with well aware care in those, in those, in the, uh, in their room and in their bathroom, we can see the activity happening inside the room 24 seven. 
I also love it too, because I hate to say it, that we've caught, you know, some of our staff sleeping at, at midnight and they're supposed to make these rounds. And so uh, for me, I sleep well at night, knowing the fact that we have a constant, you know, virtual eye, if you will, inside that wall, even though maybe sometimes the staff, you know, had, didn't deliver what they said they were going to deliver. Right. So, yeah, so that's absolutely. the other layer. And accountability is, is, is transparency equals accountability, which, you know, is going to, uh, uh, is going to, um, you know, allow assisted livings and home care companies alike, because we've had that issue before where a camera was in the home and then we're getting the call that like your caregiver is literally snoring, right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> just well, like, it, I'll, I'll be fine. I mean, I, I just talked to one of my managers, literally we had a move in yesterday because they pitch that we have this unique device that will help identify falls. And because which was because none of the other uh, uh, other assisted living buildings offered anything close to the remote. They said, yeah, we have these little pull cords in each room. Well, what if the pull cord is on the other side of the room? But my you know grandma is on the other side. Well, you know, what are you going to do now? Or what if they have fallen and they bumped their head on the corner of the table and now they're unconscious, right? You know, nobody's going to pull that cord and nobody's going to call for help. So this device will tell us, oh, somebody's there. Literally within less than two minutes, we'll get the help, right? Because we're going to see that person laying on the ground, not moving, not responding to the beeping sound. And uh, in 24-7, somebody's going to attend to that alert and notify the right people. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot to digest for people that are listening because they're probably going to have to re-listen to this because it's it's so it for I think the common person it's such a foreign idea to be able to have such a, a crazy amount of information without having to be in the home and it's relatively um, inexpensive compared to any type. I mean. You like you said, you're talking tens of you know, you're talking not a few hundred dollars, you're talking thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, you're throwing thousand dollar bills around like nickels once you're starting to get in that realm. And to be able to offer these services to somebody for eight or nine dollars a day comparatively to everything else out there is is it's just it's not even in the realm of competition of what this stuff costs. Now, um, you know, obviously it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't prevent, it doesn't uh, make one-on-one -on -one care or assisted living obsolete. It complements it and it really helps out these families. Neil, if people want to start inquiring with CHL, say, hey, listen, I need to know learn more about this. Who are they calling? Who are they? What's the number and the the uh, the, the website to go to to find out more and, and to start getting you business? Okay, cool. Well, the easiest way is to visit our website at uh, connectedhomeliving.com, connectedhomeliving.com, um, or call us at 800-311-7859. Now, I'll be honest with you, if you're a consumer, uh, we, we don't have a direct-to-consumer model. We prefer to work with our partners, our, our home care partners. And uh, so we have them. Uh, right now we're in 24 states, but pretty soon here, before the end of the year, we'll be in all 50 states, including Canada. But but for now, we will we'll identify where you're located and then we'll typically uh, refer you to a, uh, an agency who's close in proximity and, and let you know that, you know, who to, uh, who to reach out to. But we'll uh, happy to answer all the questions and direct you to the right folks. But yeah, connectedhomeliving.com. That's our website. Awesome. Neil, thank you so very much for coming on the podcast, sharing your insights. Uh, without a doubt, for, for those that listen, this is still, even if they're the individual consumer, it's still going to give them a lot of information and they can start, you know, searching for who can provide this for them in their their local um, their local area of the country. So it'll definitely be a good thing. And I think people are going to find a lot of value from this conversation. So and it wasn't because of me. It was because of you. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Ryan. I really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. And for everybody listening, thank you so, so much, much for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.